Hi, I'm Sylvie from HR.com and welcome to Inspire 2020. Happy you could join us for this webcast, Crafting a Strategic Purpose and Values-Based Culture for Now and Beyond COVID-19, presented by Joe Urb Urbanski and Jack Gottlieb from the Total Solutions Group. This webcast has been pre-approved for one HRCI business credit and one SHRM credit. Please be sure to attend the complete webcast in order to receive your credits. If you have any questions during the webcast, please click on the Q&A tab of your webinar controls, and you, you may also use chat, as was mentioned. I will post a link to the exit survey in the chat area in the presentation slides will be available in the archived version of this webcast under archived webcasts. And it's now my pleasure to turn it over to our presenters. Well, hello once again. My name is Joe and my colleague here is Jack. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at in the world. We are coming at you from the Total Solutions Group for a session today, crafting a strategic purpose and values-based culture for now and beyond COVID-19. And uh, we want to make sure that this is interactive, engaging, fun, and of course, high energy so you can see we are standing up. That's right. We don't sit down on stage for you, so we're going to stand today. Hashtag stand up webinars. All right, so let's have some fun today. Let's kind of jump right in and kind of set you up with this. And I know you know this. Three months ago felt like three years ago. It is hard to track all time, but our whole world has been turned upside down. Literally, the world has been turned upside down. So we're approaching things dramatically different than we had previously. Your culture, your organizational strategy, all the work that we've done with our clients, all the work that you're doing with your customers as well. So we bring you two quotes. The first is this, make the plan, execute the plan, expect the plan to go off the rails and throw away the plan. Now that quote is from a fictional character, Captain Cold from the Flash TV show that I watched with my kids. And isn't, isn't it so true that we have to throw away the plan, right? That's where we are right now. But here's the next quote by Dwight D. Eisenhower, former president, is this, the plan is nothing, planning is everything. So we want you to see this session as an opportunity for you to strategically think and plan about your organizational culture, your department culture, the BE teams, and the culture that you're building with your teams, and even one-on-one -on -one in those relationships. Because culture is at the center of everything that you do in who you're becoming as you live and breathe and execute from day to day, all the way through the long run beyond COVID-19. But it's not just the posters, the pens, the t-shirts, and the mugs. It's so much more than that. And obviously you know that, that's why you're here. So let me ask you these four questions real quick. I want you to answer kind of in your head, not out loud, because we can't hear you. So first, do you know what your culture is? If I said, hey, write down on a sheet of paper what your culture is, type it out. What is the culture of your organization, your department, your team? Do you know what it is? Do you know how it was formed? Do you know who's influencing it? And do you know if it's driving your business forward or holding you back? Now I'm curious to know, because when we do this in live you know, sessions all across the country at other conferences, when you know, we can finally be in person, most of the audience is at, I, they know one of the answers, two of the answers, few know three, almost none know all four. So I challenge you, you've got to start understanding what your culture is, how it was formed, who's influencing it, and if it's driving your business forward or holding you back, right? And then three follow-up questions with one answer. How often are you thinking about and talking about your culture? How often are you building and connecting to your culture? And how often are you evaluating and reinforcing your culture? The answer needs to be what? All the time. That's right, all the time. Cultural development's like taking a shower. You took a shower today, maybe yesterday, at least three times this week, right? So cultural development is like taking a shower. If you only do it once, you're gonna smell pretty badly. It's not gonna work. So our suggestion at TSG, take this for what it's worth, is take more showers together. It's a metaphor, it's a metaphor, so work with us. We want you to take cultural development showers. So today, this session that you've got for about 45 minutes, this is a shower. This is a culture shower, and we want you to go back, as, as Jack said, as some of you are coming in, we're going to share some follow-ups with you, audio, video. You know, you've got this experience. Make sure that this isn't just a one and done, that you follow up with it, because if you don't, then it's gone. That's how important culture is, that we need to be talking about it every single day. 
We're going to share with you some of our standards later. And the first two are relevant and compelling. And I used to joke, I'm using those words every single day. And the only days I'm not using them are when I'm not at work. That's how I know how important these things are because we're sharing it with over and over and over again. But then I introduce these to my family life. So I'm using the words relevant and compelling even outside of work. So I'm talking about organizational development and culture with my family, with my friends and our relationships, especially now with everything going on with the racial tensions, right? Economic strife, every, what everyone's dealing with, but also organizationally in your culture. So now you're kind of viewing this from several lenses as you join us today. So here's not what culture is, but what culture needs to be. So take a breath. It's a living, breathing, dynamic identity that defines your organization's purpose, direction, and values, the focus of today, empowering your people to take ownership. What's that word, oh, Jeff? Ownership. Ownership, right? And make decisions to drive forward what your organization really needs. And again, the focus of today is purpose, direction, and values. This is about crafting a strategic vision, purpose, values-based organization for your team, your department, wherever you're coming from, right? But it's living, it's breathing, it's dynamic, it changes. You know that the adage that you've heard before is, we have to make sure to bring people into our organization that are culture fit. That's no, it's not good enough anymore. We have to bring in people who enhance the culture, who are gonna bring the culture to the next level, right? It's living, it's breathing, it's dynamic. So today, we're gonna be your CCOs, that's your chief culture officers, to support you, like I said, for about 45 minutes, and there's three things that we're gonna do today. First, help you establish your four cornerstones. So as you look at establishing this purpose-based, this vision-based, this values-based culture and organization, what are those four cornerstones that are driving every decision that you make? Number two is defining a fly purpose and vision. I know it sounds like it might be cheesy, but it's really relevant to you. And then number three is developing a strategic discipline so that you can do this consistently and take those culture showers more frequently and together while being appropriate at the same time. And if you hate lectures, you hate webinars, you hate video conferencing, you're going to love this because we're going to give you three promises. Have some what? Fun. Learn some stuff that's relevant to you so that you feel empowered. You can actually do something with this. That is our promise. That is our intention. So as we kick this off, I want you to write in the chat box or the Q&A box. I know some of you had said, hey, the, uh, the chat box seems disabled, but we see some of you are able to write in the chat box. So write in the chat box if you're able to. Sylvie, is that working? I actually don't see that the chat box is working either. No, we have people chatting in. Do we? All right. Yes, so we do. I'm responding just to some Perfect. Questions. If for whatever reason you're unable to get that to work, you can also write it in the Q&A. But I want you to fill in the blank here. Again, live session. Let's make this interactive right up front. Most strategic planning meetings, blank, dot, dot, dot. Just take a moment. Take 20 seconds. Fill in the blank. Most strategic planning meetings, what? Are we have they boring and useless. We just have aren't, which is okay. Good. Aren't. Collaborative. <laughs> not, they're not strategic. Go nowhere. Superficial, love that word. Not impactful, tactical. Oh, wow, you're going to piss. Get off topic, useless. Too high level are dumb <laughs> sessions. Got it? Boring and repetitive. Don't exist. Don't have real purpose. <laughs> Don't have great ideas. I love it. We're just getting real with these emotions. Scrap oh my gosh. Today. Our lip service, I see it now. Our Too dry. short to be effective. Wow. By the so way, much for the disclaimer, this we got to like be honest. Couch, this, for some of you, this is like a little red couch moment. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Well, we appreciate that. And unfortunately, Jack, I don't see a single positive comment in here. Okay. Effective. They're still going. Like, I got to get yeah. this out. <laughs> all right. We, we get it. We get it. Calm down. Take a, take a breath. Take a breath. All right. So got your clearly, they're not working, right? At best, at best, as you may have read from the, our kind of uh, description for the session is at best you get like a pretty little sheet it's colorful it's nice it's laminated and then it ends up in a file folder somewhere maybe maybe it's on somebody's office maybe maybe it's on the wall somewhere but it doesn't lead to much so we have to transform the way we do this that is why we're here today to give you some of these strategies and tactics right so long-term strategies short-term tactics 
to kind of transform the way we do this. So it starts here with this question. Why are you here? You need to know for your organization, your department, your team, yourself, what's the number one need or goal as you stabilize and strengthen now and for the long term beyond COVID-19. And we know many of you, you're doing fine and everything's great and simple and dandy and you've had to hire more people. We know many of you are struggling and you're just starting to reopen or some people on your team are sick and you've had to furlough others. So we know this runs the spectrum. So take a moment, we're gonna give you 30 seconds to think it and then type it out once again in the chat box. But we want you to take the time to actually think first so that you can make the most of this experience so it's not like every other strategic planning session. So take a moment, we're gonna give you some music, we're gonna give you some silence. What is the number one need or goal as you stabilize and or strengthen now and for the long term? Music during a webinar? That's right, this isn't just some webinar. So this is, we're not gonna go through all of your responses, all of your answers. This is your time for you to identify what we call your leadership dashboard. Today you're in charge. You're the organizational consultant for your team and you're deciding what's most important to you. We want you to remember that. We will remind you of that as we go throughout the rest of this session, but we want you to know, why are you here? What is your purpose in coming to this session in particular? What are you trying to get out of it? What's really most important, right? And I, I see a couple of these and I really love it, like regrouping and being agile for the uncertainty, cohesion, alignment, taking this opportunity to refresh the organization, effective continuity while working remotely. So there's really a lot of responses here from the very thoughtful and just very strategic. There's some very emotional responses as well. My company seems to not have established a mission, vision, culture, and goals. Right, so we need you to know this for you. This isn't for us to share, this is for you as we really get in to understanding your number one goal as you strengthen and stabilize both now and for the long term. All right, so I'll bring back up the slides and I'll share with you a little bit about who we are and why we're doing this so we can kind of jump forward and take you into the future where we're going with this. Oops. So we believe that you know, people spend more time at work than they do at home. So work has to be a place where we become the best version of ourselves. That's who we are. That's why we operate. That's why we do what we do. Jack and I have been working together for about 15 something odd years now. And it started with Jack and Joe days. That was the very beginning of like just how we support and grow and work with each other. And that's where we started developing that culture. Right. And now we've enhanced into a strategic consulting results-based training and dynamic keynotes experience for Large clients, Fortune 100 companies, Fortune 500 companies, small 10 to 15 size organizations, helping them do three things. We're your partner in driving the results that you've already heard me say, the results that are really most important in these three areas, your culture, your strategy, and your capability. And we're touching upon all three of those today. Obviously, the session's focused on culture, but this is about being strategic now for the long term, and it's about the capabilities that you've got to build. Some of those are putting together a vision and mission. Some of those are thinking about the values that are most important to you. And of course, it's about what we call your four cornerstones because culture is at the center of what? Everything that you do, right? So I want you to assess your culture. Last question, and I'm gonna turn it over to Jack and you're gonna jump into the four cornerstones, but you've gotta have this set up this context. So I want you to assess your culture right now. Put numbers once again in the chat box. Five is dynamic growth. You're doing great and you continue to grow. Things are booming. It's kind of hard to keep up. Four, you're moving forward. You're making progress. Three is break even. Things are working. They're not working. You don't know why it's working. You don't know why it's not working, but you're kind of right in the middle status quo. Two is regression. It's slowly getting worse. And one is a total loss. You have no idea what's happening and you have no idea how to fix it. So take a moment, 
write just the number 5432 or 1 in that chat box. We'll take a look, a quick look at where everybody is, and then we're going to help you establish the four cornerstones that will get you to at least one number higher, if not two or three, or Jack, maybe even four if they're all the way at total loss. We get them to a seven. Seven. All right, so let's let's see just on average where we are. We got lots of threes, lots of twos, a couple fours, a few ones. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. We got Doug out of four. That's great. Caroline, I'm so sorry. You're out of one. No fives. Oh. All right, Jack, let's do a couple things to get them from a one or a two or a three or a four towards a five. You just need to do me a favor, my friend. Stop sharing your screens. I cannot get mine. No, nope, hey, I thought sir. I did that. You got That's it. That's all right. Look, we're human here. That's all right. Perfect. Well, let's now take a step forward. Now that we've laid this groundwork, you start to really start to immerse in, okay, how is my culture formed? Where are we at? Beyond you answering those questions, what if we went through your whole organization with the questions Joe provided and we asked that? Mm -hmm. Would you get different responses? But we have different perspectives. We have different views that aren't just views but really guiding the actions that we have. So we need to really shape at the core what that means it looks like. So with that, I want you to connect back to that singular goal of what's really most important. You just defined that in the chat box. One of them that really stuck out to me, one of you mentioned courageous communication. Right? This, this is not just about a goal. This is about really energy, emotion, purpose, right? Again, purpose-based culture. I want you to bring that goal kind of to the center because this is not about going through notes and ideas, but real action. So we need to know where to tap. What do we need to tap into? Not more surveys, not more um, scoring or metrics or evaluate. All that is needed, but what at the core do we need to tap into? So quick story for you. Uh, my very first cruise I ever went on, I actually met a couple by the name of Harry and Selma who own one of these dinner on the sea type cruises. In college, they call it booze cruises. For us, it's dinner on the sea. Try to make it sound nicer, don't we? So they were sharing with me that they were in the process right before they started their cruising, like actually going on real cruises, that they sold the business, but over the six month period after they sold the business in terms of time to have a couple more cruises, do some maintenance, the entire boiler, so that main boiler all the way in the back broke. They brought in two of the companies that are absolutely the best at what they do. Took the boat offline for a week, roughly twenty to thirty thousand dollars in direct cost. Still didn't work. So they got this guy on the dock who's like a handyman's handyman, no major company. And Harry's like, "This is this is it. This is all I'm going to be able to do." Brings the guy in. He's factoring. He's by himself. It's going to take probably a couple of weeks. He's like, "All right, I can afford this. I, I, if I have to, but if I don't, if it doesn't work now. I'm going to lose the sale of the business. I can't retire." Guy comes in and he doesn't go right to the boiler room like most of them do. He doesn't start working and tinkering. He says, Harry, I need to ask you a couple questions. And he's like going through all these questions about the usage of the boat, the maintenance of the boat, how often he uses it, what kind of stuff that they're doing on the boat, everything possible, like five minutes just going through questions. So, all right, Harry, let's go to the boiler room. And he asks Harry to stay. Harry's like, I just need you to take the two weeks you need to fix it. He's like, I don't know if it's gonna need two weeks. So the guy's tinkering around, finds the problem in five minutes and said, Harry, do me a favor, go in my bag. He's like, well, what do you need? Do you need this, this, and this? He's like, no. There's a little tiny tap hammer in the bag. And Harry's like, wait a minute, my boiler is broken. What are you gonna do with this, this little tap hammer? So trust me, he says all the way in the back, there is this red valve all the way in the back. I want you to go all the way to the back, all the way in the back and it's right there. Do me a favor. I'm gonna actually have you do it yourself. Just tap this a couple times. Cause that valve, all the pipes go in, connects to the boiler, steam comes up, that runs the whole boat. That's, that, that's what's missing. Harry taps it a couple times, all of a sudden, everything starts to work. And Harry's like, what? The guy's like, look, I know you're selling this business. You're gonna put me as the person liable for this. If there's anything broken, I'm here to fix it. That way you don't have to worry. But if it works in six months, you pay my bill. Harry said, fine. Guy zipped up his bag, sells the business, six months go by, everything's great. Harry's thinking a few hundred dollars. Now you saw me, I accidentally hit the next click. It wasn't a few hundred dollars for 15 minutes of work. $10,000 for the same industry rate. Harry was livid. I want an itemized invoice. Guy said, no problem. $10,000, tapping the red valve only cost you $50. That's it. For knowing where to tap, $9,950. 
want you to take a deep breath in, deep breath out. How many of us are doing a lot of tapping the red valve, but we actually aren't tapping the red valve? It's, it's understandable, as Joe alluded to, there's a lot going on right there. There's a lot that we don't know what to do. But really at the core, as we go through this today, hopefully you start to think about, what do I need to really take ownership of? That like an operating system is to your cell phone, that's the core. No matter how good the apps are, those are your teams and business units and regions. Doesn't matter if the operating system doesn't govern how we work, how we collaborate, how we think, how we focus. Where do we need to tap? So what is your red valve? Well, the red valve revolves around four cornerstones that whether it's culture transformation, how that drives our strategy, builds and activates our capability now and for the long term. Number one is your marketplace. Where you play, where you compete, the real impact you want to have on the world. Two, your customers, the value you create, the obviously impact you want to create for them. Who you are as an organization now, how are you pivoting? Where are you innovating either in your services, your processes, but also internally? And who is going to live and drive it? Not just do their jobs, not just be really good, but really take ownership of the impact they have on our people, our employees, our staff, our team, or in Disney, our cast members. Who's going to own it? So let's walk through the blueprint for each of these to get you to take a step back, give you an example of what we need to do with that blueprint, which is defining the one critical question that we as an organization need to get on the same page with to ask and answer to shape the culture we need to have, want to have, and really ensure that we can be successful. Blueprint, example of a question, and get you to start to think about what is the four critical questions, one in each of these buckets we must ask and answer now, and for the long term, so we get on the same page. When we ask questions, we get people's ideas and insights. That's what questions are about. The four purpose, vision, mission, drivers, communication code, strategic pillars, KPIs, keep going down the list. We need to be able to have questions that invite people to take ownership. So let's go in. Marketplace. This is about where you compete and play in order to drive sustainable growth and impact to influence lasting change in your community, region, country, and the world. This is about four simple things. One, the real problems that we as an organization are here to solve. Two, the opportunities that we want to seize. Like in banking, we want to seize not just FinTech, but how we can really be a partner to building people's financial dreams and achieving goals, not just increase their savings and process transactions, right? What is the position we're committed to having and the transformation that obviously in the communities that we serve? Think about that. Example for you. Well, before that, as I'm giving this to you, I want you to kind of, it's like a little mini brain workout. How does this relate to you now and for the long term? So example, one of our clients, Mid-Florida Credit Union. What can Mid-Florida do to help families and businesses throughout Florida improve their financial well-being with confidence and positively impact the communities we serve? This is not just as Joseph put on the wall. Well, that's a really nice question. Well, look at that beautiful vision. Let's do a year-end review around this. No, this is an active part of not just the long term, but how we think, focus, and pivot day to day. Executive team down and all the way throughout the departments. That's marketplace. Customers, or if you're a credit union, members, who are you passionate about serving now and in the future in order to help them create, your customers, the life and business they want beyond just what your products and services can do for them? This is about three things a true understanding and how to create value for their known, unknown, and emerging needs. You've got frontline workers, obviously to executive, if it's teller to executive, if it's an engineer, customer service rep, sales folks. Have we tapped into what they really maybe are seeing and understanding? Most don't, because I mean, you're not, because we don't have the time. We have our jobs, we have our roles, that's the structure of maintain consistency, but what's gonna maintain how we focus and impact? Two, the solutions you must design and deliver to solve their real needs and optimize their goals. And three, how we can fully achieve the impact they want. Here's another example for you. Again, how does this relate to you now and for the long term? Johnson Control is one of our clients. How do we ensure our customers are confident that our employees are a trusted advisor 
who is fully capable to drive their business forward, not just provide great products and services. That's huge. What is the critical question you feel, wow, we need to be asking this? Top, down, left, right, vertical, horizontal, now for the long term. Again, critical question. Organizationally, who you are now, who are you becoming as you lead and execute both day to day, again, you get this theme for us and for the long term to achieve the full potential of why you exist in the first place. Three things for this. It's about integrating the priorities and needs of each department, business unit, and region. We see this with all of our global clients, especially those involved in M&A or standing up new business units. The regions have different cultures. The departments in those regions, whether they're accounting, HR, or service, they're different. People are different. How do we maximize all that is critical to, again, our culture, strategy, and our capability. And how does that drill down to what we are and what we need in this region to still connect to how we as a company are moving forward? How does this, again, just getting you to think, relate to you now and for the long term? Bosch, one of our clients, tremendous transformation we, we did with them about taking their, starting their Silicon Valley site all these different business units and departments, reporting lines of Germany, how do we really strategically bring it together? Key question that drove all of that for that, how do we understand and build on each other's strengths to identify the next big thing years before everyone else and drive it through local and global collaboration? That question really became the epicenter for how we not just bring ideas, but strategic ideas, insights, changes, next steps, because again, it was a question that opened up versus just trying to do things without really understanding that purpose and vision and values, right? Lastly, people, who's gonna own this? Who will live and drive your strategic path forward, taking full ownership of their experience rather than just being engaged? We believe in ownership, not engagement. So that we realize their full potential and performance to maximize organizational growth. Three things here, this is about Hiring and developing people with the right mindsets. You can train people every single day, but if we don't actually develop them, build their capability, not skills, it's irrelevant. Investing in their dreams and career paths. How does that connect to the organization so that we can uncover opportunities for progression and succession beyond just the jobs that they were hired to do? Soak that in. Does this relate to you now? for the long term and you will get all this follow-up from us so glad you're taking notes you're taking screenshots but you will get this from us the question for our team because we have a large team across the country how, but here's our question how do we continue strengthening the company to invest the time into growing the business and our people in order to become the best version of ourselves where we express our real gpa our genius our passion and our achievement so as we took, take, took you through these, again, it's about the red valve. What is really most important in our marketplace, with our customers, who we are as an organization, and who's going to really take ownership of it so their jobs are about results, not just getting stuff done. So now, I'm going to set you up to take a deep breath in one more time for me. Deep breath out. You're going to have a whopping 37 seconds. Soak that in, okay? to really answer this question. Based on your goal in coming in, courageous communication, increased sales, we don't even have an identity. Hey, where you are is gonna help you to get to where you need to be. Which of the four cornerstones does your organization need to stabilize and strengthen first? These do happen in parallel with the work we do, but just for focus today, which one needs to be first? And what question do you need to ask? Please in the chat box, type the cornerstone and a question you feel that needs to be asked. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to build progress. So we'll see you in a moment.
All right, let's see what we have. We'll just spend a moment. Thank you so much. Now they're coming in lightning speed here. Love it. Four cornerstones with speed. All right, so we've got Mary, cornerstone people. What do we need to do differently now that we have experienced a business as unusual situation? I love the intention. That is awesome. Jacqueline, how do we maintain retention of both crisis and marketplace competition? Powerful. Uh, let's do just a couple more for your customers. Uh, Gabrielle, what their needs are as they reopen and how, can, how we can help by doing things differently. Thank you very much. Kelly, thank you, our people. How can the organization support you and your work? Uh, let's just do uh, one more. Uh, let's see who we got. Uh, Cheryl, who we are now that we have reorganized. So right, so who are we now that we've reorganized? That's excellent. One last thought before we move forward. The power of doing this, and we'll get you more value and support of this, is defining the initial questions, getting your key leaders to define what do they feel that question one in each bucket is. Integrate that, get that out to your employees. And unlike an engagement survey that you know really 20% of the mind and heart is really engaged in, because it's just checking boxes, it's about what question do you feel we need to be asking and answering, bringing that together, and then starting to create answers, ideas, and intentions to move forward. We'll give you some more, but great stuff. And now let's take our steps forward. Now we can now package this into something that's flat. All right, so what does fly mean? We are about to find out. You've got to have a fly purpose and vision as you go forward here. So we're going to continue to focus on that leadership dashboard that we asked you to do. What's the number one need or goal? So put that back in your mind. What's the number one need or goal as you stabilize and strengthen now and, of course, for the long term, beyond COVID-19? And pop quiz. Solve this page. Can you solve this maze, yes or no? Of course not, but I know there's two groups of people in here. The first group is saying, wait a minute, there's no exit, there's no way out. The other group, you're still in the maze. So write down in the chat box real quick, which group were you a part of? Write the word finish if you were immediately looking for the finish, and write down stuck if you're still stuck in the maze and you realize, I'm never gonna get out of here. The whole idea here is if you do not start with your vision, where you're going, what you want, what's most important to you and your organization. If you don't look four years beyond what that purpose and vision is, it doesn't matter what decisions you make. As you look back at this maze, you can make a left, you can make a right, you can make four lefts and a right and a left and another right. You can make decisions all day long, all week long, all month long. You're still never getting out of this maze unless you go right back with the way you started, which in life, as we know, not possible to go backwards. So you've got to start with that vision, the purpose and the vision for four years. Now, why do we say four years? Because high school is four years, college is supposed to be four years. We elect a president every four years. The Olympics are every four years. There's four seasons. The World Cup is every four years. There's four elements that make up everything, earth, wind, water, fire, right? And if you are followers of Captain Planet when we were kids, heart, right? But earth, wind, water, fire, they make up everything. They create, right? So you've got these four core elements. Four is this magical number that I want you to start thinking about, is what's the purpose and vision four years from now? That's how we know we're talking long term, right? Midterm, somewhere about a year, and short term is the next 30 to 90 days. And they have to connect from the four-year vision all the way back to today and your everyday focus. So here's your strategic path. Just wanna give you a really big picture and then we'll focus on a much smaller part of that picture. So you've got your long-term picture, that's your purpose. It's kind of a statement of why are we here? It keeps you engaged and it's lifetime focus. Does purpose change? Of course, but you know why you're in the game. You know why you're playing. Then you've got your vision. This inspires and directs you. It's long-term four-year focus. And then you've got your focus areas or what we at TSG call your four cornerstones, right? This is your critical foundation for development. And these change every two to four years, right? You need at least a year to go through and to see, hey, is it working, is it not working? Then the second year you tweak, and maybe even the third and fourth year, but you put yourself on this long-term path, right? That's long-term. Short-term focus, you wanna have your goals, and you wanna have your objectives or your OKRs, your outcomes and key results. 
These are going to help you move towards that long-term vision. And then, of course, you have your everyday and your very short term. It's the plans, which are the detailed steps that are going to get you moving, right? You got to be able to measure them, deadlines. If we didn't have a deadline, we wouldn't do anything. You had a date and a time for this session. Otherwise, you can't show up, right? You have your KPIs or key performance indicators. These are quantitative measurements so that you know, are we tracking the right stuff? And then ritual, these are your everyday habits, the things that you do on a regular basis, like your cultural development, like we're using the words relevant and compelling in the work that we do. We use the word really most important. We talk about the four cornerstones. While these are helping us develop the long term, we discuss them. How often, Jack? Every, I mean, truthfully, it shapes every day without even forcing it. It's just, it's, it's the operating system to our phone. Yeah, love it. So where are we going over the next, you know, seven to eight minutes here is purpose, vision, and goals. Now, goals were not a part of the session title, but why are we focusing on goals? Because goals are how you get to the vision, right? If you try to swim out to the horizon, say your vision takes you all the way out to the horizon, you try to swim to the horizon, what happens? You die, you drown, you're not going to get there. Your vision is too far, it, but you can swim out to your goals, the islands, the buoys, a floating shark, you know, whatever, a bow out there, you can swim to those things, right? Those are your goals that will get you moving towards the vision. You don't achieve a vision, you achieve goals. So the vision and the goals are tied together and they help you move towards your purpose. And these goals can be smart, you heard it, it's specific, it's measurable, it's achievable, relevant and timelined and there's a silent B at the end that nobody can see, nobody can hear, boring. Goals are boring. I'm going to exercise three times this week. I'm going to put more broccoli on my plate. I'm going to make sure that I talk to my organizational leaders about what's really most important to our four cornerstones this week. Goals are boring unless they're attached to a vision that is what we call fly. F stands for fascinating. Say it out loud with me. Say fascinating. Fascinating. Say lucid. Say lucid. Lucid. And why is yearned for? Go ahead, say yearned yearn for. for. Love it. So this is how you got to focus your purpose and your vision. It's got to be fascinating. It's got to be something that people can't wait for. They're yearning for it. They love it. They're interested in it. It's relevant and compelling. It's got to be lucid. It's got to be something that they can clearly see, hear, and understand. They feel something when they think about the purpose, when they think about the vision. I shared with you a quick statement of our manifesto a little bit ago that people work, they, they're at work more than they're at home. So work has to be a place where people become the best version of themselves. That is a part of our TSG manifesto. It's a part of our purpose statement. It's very clear. It's very fascinating to us, which is why we started out with Jack and Joe days, right? We got to make sure that we have those days to become better versions of ourselves. What are Jack and Joe days? You teach me something, I teach you something. Simple, right? But that's how we began way back in the day. Not even gonna tell you how long ago back in the day was. But it's gotta be fascinating. F for fascinating, L for lucid, and Y for yearned for. In a similar way, you think of somebody like Martin Luther King Jr., who something like 65, 70 years ago said, I have a dream. Now, it's a dream. It's a vision. It wasn't, he didn't say, I have a plan. He didn't have a plan. The plan doesn't matter until the dream and the vision encapsulate people, get people inspired, get people excited. That's where it has to start. And you know that he did not have business cards that he was handing out said, hi, I am Martin Luther King Jr., CEO of the Civil Rights Movement. It was not some, some position that he held. It was a dream. It was a purpose. It was a mission, right? So I know some of you are thinking, how do I convince my, my superiors or my, my bosses? How do I convince my colleagues? I don't have the title or I don't have the authority. Neither did Martin Luther King Jr. Neither, neither do most world leaders who make the difference. Gandhi didn't have a title. I mean, he did, but not a title relevant to becoming a world changer. Mother Teresa, right? You think about these game changers. It started with a purpose. So you got to focus on that purpose and that vision. Then you set the goals accordingly. So to craft a vision, you've got to paint a picture, right? Like Martin Luther King Jr., if you know his speech, right? The way he, 
He talked about his children walking down the same halls as other children and different races, different colors, different cultures coming together. That's a vision we're still working on. Why? Because it's fascinating to many of us. You paint a picture, you tell a story, you get people inspired by that, you build hope, you get people to want that future. Fascinating, lucid, and yearned for, right? That's what culture has to be. It's ingrained in everything that you do, right? So take a moment right now, write down a question, a thought, what's on your mind in that Q&A box so that we can take you know, two or three minutes, we'll answer two or three questions live in real time right now for you. So what can you do to focus your purpose and your vision so that they're fascinating, lucid, and yearned for, and of course attached to your four cornerstones? And then we're gonna focus on strategic discipline. So I'll stop sharing my screen, let's go to the Q&A, and let's hear what questions or chat you have Sylvia is saying, love this presentation. Thank you, Sylvie. We appreciate you hosting us and having us here. So drop any questions that you have. Otherwise, we'll answer questions that have come up from other participants. And one that I alluded to before, go ahead, Jack. No, you finish. I'll finish. One that I alluded to before was that question of, well, what if I don't have that position? How do I convince my team, I gonna... my, my superiors, of you know these how important these four cornerstones are and that they need to be attached to a certain purpose so jack you know what why don't you handle that one since you were going to bring it up anyway telepathy look at that telepathy so in a lot of the work we've done and especially in my background having been an executive that's done this on top of what we've done i can say this truthfully to you cho said it so well it's not about although it's absolutely the intention let's get executive buy-in and maybe a lot of you have that maybe at least are open to it but what I'll tell you is first, those four cornerstones, you can start with you. Your department, working with, let's say maybe the, the department you are most aligned to, biggest partner to, who is your internal customer that you have greatest alignment with? And define what their four cornerstone questions are. You define those, great. You get them to answer them now for the long term, great. And we ask, how does that shape? And there's more steps, but this is something you can just do right away. How does this shape our bigger purpose between our two departments and how that connects the organization. What is the vision as to where we're looking to go? How does that shape the goals that we wanna have over the next 30 days? Let's incubate and own the reality ourselves. Be the change we wanna see in the world. Joe brought up Gandhi. It's a paraphrase of that powerful statement. Own it, incubate it, pilot it, show it, and then you're saying, look, this is what we've done. We feel we need to do this in our region. We take another step up. So that's a way beyond just, oh, I got to wait till the big picture. Nope. Own it now for your department, you or one that you work with. And that's a key. Again, now they're just strategic kind of steps like the cornerstones. How you can start doing this now and it will add value now, not just a year from now. You can shape all that we're doing for you for the next 30 days, let alone the long term. So that's a key piece for you. Awesome. Thank you, Jack. I want to be able to respond to something that happened at 1103 Eastern this morning. I think it was uh, Kari was saying, why can't I go back in the way I came out? So you may not have answered, asked that question right now, but you asked it 10 minutes ago. So I want to get to that. You, it's like you going back to the start of your race. That's not how you finish the race by going back to the start. You finish the race by going to the finish. If we were working out together, and you started working out, you can't finish your workout at your start, right? So the whole point is we don't go out the maze, the maze of life, the maze of decisions, the maze of your four cornerstones, the maze of your purpose. You don't go out, you can't, you don't go out the womb the same way you came into this world, right? So you've got to have that purpose, that future, that vision, that direction. I love, I love it. Rosamond is saying we pulled a task force together and they rewrote our MVV's mission, vision, values, right? went from four pages to T, I'm not sure, maybe that means one, to provide secure retirement benefits and superior service. One sentence, I love that. And then Rosemary is also saying you're honing in on the power of the individual. That's absolutely right, right? So let's do that as we wrap over the next few minutes here. Jack's gonna take us through the strategic discipline real briefly because we're gonna follow up with some videos and additional support. We'll wrap up with a quick evaluation and hand it back to Sylvie. So Jack, take it away with strategic discipline. Awesome. So what's powerful about this 
is it's not just about the long term, but it's that frequency of long term, next year, next six months, 90 days, 30 days. What does that mean each week? That's how this stuff becomes real. It's not just the big picture, which one of you uh, wrote about it. How do we do this? So going back to that leadership dashboard goal, connecting those four cornerstones into it, and how does that shape our purpose, our vision, and our goals? While we're building for the long term, this is about being agile, we can start to use and leverage this for just the next 30 days, building the muscle before we actually go and lift the heavy weight or go and run that sprint. So let's go forward now. Your values must serve as your standards. This is one of the biggest breakdowns that we see with companies. All the stuff on the wall, in the binders, as the screen share, all the different pieces. You have the different fun days that are themed. That's great. Most companies, though, when we actually dive in and look at the values, they know the words, but they don't know the standards, the behaviors. How am I actually, when they say transparency, you probably have this, a lot of people throw the values around. Oh, we're not being transparent today. You're not being all in. We've seen this. So while we may have values, are they constructed in a way that, number one, tells a story? Two, is defined so that the behavior is universal for everybody and governs how we think, how we plan, how we respond, and move forward. It should be a way that we are driving, like that operating system on your phone, how the apps work together. So let's take a look at what does that actually mean and look like? We have five core standards we use here at TSG, but we also leverage an all of our client work, and you can adopt these. Projects, plans, goals, long-term, short-term, meetings, communication, or just a way to process decisions. This is a real powerful structure you can use immediately. One, is what we're doing now and for the long-term relevant to who we are, where we're going, how we're gonna get there. Two, you heard Joe mention, it's compelling. Is this inspiring? Is this something that people are galvanized around and really helps them see past the fray and the frustration and know there's a bigger purpose behind it? Number three, sustainable. How do we make sure we use and adopt these in a way that can be consistent, relevant, and compelling to today, but sustainable in how we go forward to tomorrow? Four, how we, is this replicable? All the work we're doing for this new ERP, new core conversion, new system, Will we be able to replicate this globally? Will we be able to replicate this to our different customer segments? Will this carry forward? Lastly, number five, is it scalable? Easily and seamlessly able to move forward so that we are not holding our business back, but propelling it forward, again, because of our marketplace, customers, organization, and people. What really is most important, has that shape our purpose, vision, and goals. So when we execute and when we pivot, these are the standards that govern how we work together. So we're going to share with you more on this, but if your values are not actionable standards by which you make decisions, there's no point to identifying company values. So we're not going to use it day to day, and it's just going to be a nice thing that we kind of are using. We're missing the boat of who we can be and what we become. Absolutely. So we will follow up with you to share with you some video. We just recorded a video just the other day on the values so that you can continue to fir uh, affirm that values must be standards, right? So as you craft a strategic purpose and values-based culture, both for now and the long-term, as we get ready to wrap in the moment, you've got to remember that culture is a living, breathing, dynamic identity. It's constantly changing, and you are part of that change right now, focusing on the purpose, the direction, and the values, right? We said we're going to have some fun. We're going to learn some stuff. We're going to feel empowered. I feel that way. I feel like, Jack, we need to go have another conversation about our organizational goals and our values and our standards today. But I ask this of you in the audience, don't you wish we had more time? This is such a big conversation. We don't. We have to wrap right now. But imagine if you were having this conversation with your whole team right now. We want to be able to share with you some additional support, additional resources, like we said, get you some videos and whatnot. So when you have a moment after this session, I'll hand this back over to Sylvie, but when you have a moment, go to tinyurl.com slash TSG results. You want to go to that as soon as possible because we're going to send you this over the next 24 hours, your first, um, your first kind of follow-up to make sure that you've got value added via video, audio, you'll get the slide summary. I know you may have been taking screenshots or, or pictures. So go to this either on your phone, go to this on the website. It's tinyurl.com, T-I-N-Y-U-R-L.com slash TSG for Total Solutions Group results. So take a moment. It's literally 90 seconds to two minutes. Depends on how much thought you put into the eval and letting us know how we can connect, support you. 
One more time, that's tinyurl.com slash TSG results. We will hand this over to Sylvie. All right. I'd really like to thank Joe Urbanski and Jack Gottlieb from Total Solutions Group for this energizing and inspiring presentation today. And thank you also to the audience for being engaged. Your feedback is important to us, so please take a moment to fill out the exit survey that I put in the uh, chat window. We will be sending you an email with your credit information. You will also find the credits in your View My Credits page of your membership profile once the webcast has been archived. This concludes the, this webcast session. We hope you've been enjoying Inspire 2020. All virtual booths are available for the entire event. Please take a look around. There's handouts, there's all sorts of stuff to look at. So go to the exhibit hall and, uh, and check those out. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks everyone. Take care now. Tinyurl.com slash TSG results.